Good morning, everyone. Uh, if I'd have known it was going to be that week, I'd have made you greet each other and say something nice to each other, even if you don't want to. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, much better. How's the summer going? Fast, ain't it? It's, it's amazing. I, I, I stop and I blink and I think and I take a breath and I, I wonder, did I actually enjoy the summer? Fall is right around the corner. The clouds are looking like fall. There's fall things going on and so uh, but it was a beautiful summer and it was it was great how many are excited about this morning or today all day this is an awesome awesome experience for me this is uh first time for me to to uh have a baptism class and to have baptismes and and so I am super super excited this is awesome and I want this to be a very special day for you guys as we were singing these songs, there was one theme that kept coming up, and I don't know, uh, I don't know if you caught it or not, but if you read, can you read these shirts? Can you read that up there? Raised to life. Raised is the word that we want to dwell on this morning, okay? I want to talk a little bit about raised. What does it mean to be raised to life? And sometimes we use these terms loosely. Sometimes we just talk this Christian lingo and we don't really dig down into what these things actually really mean. And so this morning, I'm going to speak to these guys right here because this is their first time. We're going to talk to these guys and we're going to explain to them what's going to happen today. And the rest of you are more than welcome to listen. If you think you know it all or if you do know it all, you're free to leave. But we're going to talk to these guys. And so, congratulations, guys, for your commitment to Christ and for coming this far and for, uh, and for the rest of the day here. As you, many of you know, Becky and I were in Israel, and uh, you heard a little bit about our trip last week, and I'm going to talk just a little bit more about that trip today because what we did each and every day was walk. And we didn't just walk in Holmes County Hills, we walked up. And there was a word that we learned to use while we were over there. We used it every day. And I'm going to ask you guys to help me with that word. It's not a bad word. It's simply a Hebrew word. And it goes like this. Aliyah. Say it. Aliyah. Aliyah. Very good. We're getting there. We'll all be speaking Hebrew by the time we're done here. I'm just kidding. That's the only word we're going to learn today in Hebrew is Aliyah. Aliyah means simply to ascend. When the Jews made their exile into Israel, that, that was an Aliyah. They went up. And what you, what you read in the text and you, when you read in Scripture, when they went to Jerusalem, they went up to Jerusalem. They never went down to Jerusalem. You, you can't read anywhere where they went down to Jerusalem. It was up to Jerusalem. So it was always up. Why? Some scholars think, well, the center of the world is Israel. And if you went there, that the center of Israel is then Jerusalem. And if you went into the center of Jerusalem, that the, the Temple Mount would be the center of that. And every time they went there, they were going up. They, they went down to Egypt, back to their old life. Or if you wanted to talk about their old life, the life that they had of slavery and the life that they had of wilderness, they went down to that, but they always went up to Jerusalem. Very interesting. And so as we were traveling around on these mountains, now these aren't just, I, I told you before, these aren't hills. Uh, the first mountain that we went up was Mount uh, Timna. Now that mountain there was, uh, <laughs> it was 112 degrees that day, so we didn't make it too far, but the, the park actually closed. It was Timna Park. It closed at 1 o'clock. The next time that we went, we went to the Aaron's Mountain, where Aaron was supposedly Died. That mountain, let me look just so I get it right, was 4,780 feet up. Aliyah, all the way up. Remember we talked about that a little bit last, but that was all the way up. And so we got up there, and the view up there, I honestly, I couldn't tell you because I, didn't, I personally didn't make it to that one. But the next one was Mount Nebo. That one I made. That one was 2,680 feet up. And I want to tell you that... that God, in, 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 as I was walking through and as, as now as I'm uh, unpacking some of the things that we did on that, tell him I'll, I'll be done in about a half hour, whoever that was. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Tell them we're going up. We're going up. God is continually calling us up. And as I debrief from this trip that we took, I, was, I literally was really, uh, it, it, it aggravated me a little bit. I, w- I was a little upset at the time when we were doing these, these tour, these walks and these hikes. It's not my cup of tea. But as I get back and I start unpacking some of the things and God starts showing me some of the things, you know what? Life is up. Anything good in life that you want to accomplish is an upward climb, isn't it? Nothing's easy. Uh, some of us, there might be ease. I won't mention things. But th- when we want something of value, when we do something of significance, when there's anything that we want to accomplish, it's usually up. And I'll never forget, we would be down at the bottom of those mountains, and I would look up and I would say, oh. And once we got to the top, it was, wow. The challenge, the victory, the view. The view was unbelievable. I would take panoramic. I learned how to do that. I know. And I'd do this. And I have some awesome pictures that I, when I get to the top, I would do that. It was awesome. From that view, you could see down into Israel. From that view, you could see down into the Dead Sea. From that view, you could see the Sea of Galilee. From that view, you could see anything, almost anything you wanted to see from that view. But it took Aliyah. Aliyah, going up, always going up. So as we talk about going up, as we talk about being raised Aliyah to life, why baptism? You guys are thinking, I know that, that, that it's debated in some churches, but why, why would we do baptism? I'm going to keep it really simple here this morning so you guys can all understand. But Matthew 28, verse 19, Jesus says this. It's written in red. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You ask, why baptism? Because it's a command. It's a command. And I, I get to do this for the first time, and, 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 and I know Furman would back me on this. The last thing we wanted to do ever in this in, in the Christian life or in Light in the Valley or any church is to make, make baptism a habit or a tradition that gets washed up. Just two times a year we're going to do this. And I'm more than happy and thankful that we decided to go with immersion, full immersion than the sprinkle. It's not that I was sprinkled. I feel like I'm baptized. Don't get me wrong. But I think there's a power and there's, there's something to it when you go down in the water and come up raised to life. Amen. Amen. So it's a command. It's not a tradition. It's not a habit. It's not something that we do lightheartedly. It's not something that we do just for the fun of it. There is significance behind it. And when someone is baptized with water in that way, I want us to understand that that's a statement that they're making, and it's a big, big deal. It's not anything to take lightly. So why do we do baptism? It's a command. Say that with me. It's a command. It's a command. What is water baptism? Well, water baptism is a couple of things. We'll go through that. Water baptism is a statement of faith. And so it, the, basically the statement that we're making is when you go down into the water, you're, giving, you're leaving all the sins, all your past, everything that has ever hindered you in seeing God face to face or any of your old ways are being left at the bottom of the pond. And when you come up, it's new life in front of me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says it this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. And water baptism is a perfect picture of that very verse. Out with the old, in with the new. Repentance. Now, you guys are looking at me, these young guys are looking at me, what is repentance? Well, it's an old-fashioned word, I will agree. But repentance basically means I've changed. I've turned from my old ways and I've turned a 180 degree turn and I am following Christ and I'm going the opposite way. That's what repentance is. Turning away from your sins. It's not just confessing your sins and asking for forgiveness. It's turning away from them and living a holy life the way that the Holy Spirit guides you. Repentance is change. You've changed. Water baptism is also 
a way of giving testimony. Now, you guys all have the opportunity this afternoon to give your testimony, right, verbally. But just that simple act of doing the baptism is a, is, it's a silent testimony. It's making a public statement about what's going on inside. I was taught that the, the Christian lingo that I learned when I was a kid was it's an outward symbol of an inward cleansing. And it is. That is what it is. But it, it's, it's actually just doing something in symbolic of being cleansed. Okay? So it's a, it's a way of giving a testimony without ever saying a word. It's a public profession about something deeply personal and internal that's going on. And so I feel like water ba- baptism <laughs> is more beneficial to you than it is to God because it gives you, and it is part of God's plan. I'm not, I'm not downplaying that at all, but it does give you something to stand on. I was baptized. I was made new. My life was made new through Christ and through the act of baptism. Water baptism helps you grasp the reality that the old you has died. Water baptism is a confession of what Jesus means to you. And what I like about baptism, for me, it's a specific date. August the 20th, 2017 is a date that all of you guys can stand on and say, I was baptized on that day. It's a specific date. It's a specific time. The way we're doing it today out at Gabe and Linda's Pond is, is very unique and it's very special. And I trust that it's something you guys will never forget. Because life is going to start happening. And that's a, this date is something you can always point back to. I know uh, September the 7th, Becky and I celebrate 20 years of marriage. We had an aliyah to get there. Right? None of you did. Good. We did. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that we, we, when you break through one barrier and you're, and, and you're you're going to have to go through another and you're going to have to go through another it is aliyah the whole time that you live on this earth it's an upward climb each and every day and so my my suggestion to you is that you have god and you have jesus to help you with those aliyah moments because if you're doing it on your own you'll wear out the one mountain that i climbed i drank six liters of water and ran out and i had to have help or I wouldn't have made it off that mountain. I was dehydrated. It was bad experience. We won't talk about it anymore. By the way, every birthday we have is an aliyah, right? We have three today. We're just going to take care of this right now. If you could bring Giada over here to Viola. And Velma, if you could come up. Just right here. I won't make you come up. Right here. We want to get a picture of this. Three awesome birthdays and a little age gap between them. Not much. So we've got Giada, we've got Viola, and we have Velma. Happy birthday. So I'd like to sing happy birthday for you. It's Aliyah. It's another year. You've climbed up, right? Or did you go down? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so, Robert, if you got that, let's sing happy birthday. You guys ready? Happy birthday to you. Pick one. There you go. Another year in the books, another step in the ladder. Aliyah, we climbed further and we went higher. Thank you, guys. God bless you guys. I trust you have a blessed year. Our kids' birthdays are a big day. That's a day we had a lot of change. I'm looking forward to the day we're empty nesters. That'll be a big change. Thank you very much. First time I preached was a radical change in my life. Thank you for that opportunity, Light in the Valley. That whole deal changed my life radically. Having the opportunity to preach here. I never dreamed that I would be lead pastor, but here we are. Look what it changed. And I remember those days. I remember that day very well. What did I preach on? Okay, I won't do that. I'm sorry. What a privilege, though. Guys, seriously, to have a date that we can put a stake in the ground and say, you know what? That was the day that I got baptized. That was the day that I made a public stand for my Lord and Savior. 
Because you know what? In our lives, it's just like this. We all have past. We all have things that we've done wrong or we have things that we're not proud of. We have things that we're not excited about. And Satan, in his craftiness, will come back and he will try to tell you, ah, did you take care of that? Did you take care of that? And I'm here to tell you guys, you can say yes by the power of of the blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit on August the 20th, 2017 is my day that I started my Aliyah. The old man was buried and everything became new. What a powerful tool that we have by this act of baptism. I think God must have known what he was doing by ordaining something like this. Water baptism is a point of separation. That dividing point is from what was old and what was new is drawing a clear line between the old life and the new. And it gives us great cause to celebrate. And I, I trust that we can clap and I trust that we can have fun and sing and shout today when we get over to the pond for these guys for starting their walk with Christ. There's lots of examples in Scripture of water baptism, but there's only one that I really want to focus in on. There's two, but the, the main one is Jesus why was Jesus baptized? And I know, you know what, I know there's debates. I've, I've heard of people that didn't want to get baptized because they didn't want their hair to get wet in front of them. But if it was important enough and significant enough for Jesus to be baptized, isn't it important enough for us? And I say that because Jesus was sinless. He had no sin. He didn't have to die to the old to get to the new. Would you agree with that? So why did he do it? It's pretty simple. In Matthew chapter 3, you don't have to turn to it. I'll read it to you. Verse 13 through 17. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. This was John the Baptist. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up. Say, Aliyah. He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Interesting question. Why would a perfect man, a perfect God man, have to be baptized? John the Baptist questioned it. Verse 11, that's before 13, he talks about, I'm not even worthy of carrying your sandals. Why would I baptize you? In verse 15, he says it. Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. So he did it to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus understood that this was a part of his father's plan. And he understood that we need, he wanted to help us fulfill God's will. And so he set an example. That's why he got baptized, to set an example. Uh, he, he set an example for us believers to, to, for obedience. And, and the other thing that I see is that doing that aligned him with sinners once again. And if you, many, many times in the Bible, you'll read where he had meals with sinners, right? He had conversations with sinners. He taught sinners. He hung out with sinners a lot. And this was just another way that he could show, you know what? I'm no better than you guys. I'm going to set an example for you. And I want you to do this. And each time, it's in remembrance of him and what he did for us for our sins. Same as communion, that they kind of run hand in hand. So, he is our model of obedience to God while he identified himself as a sinner. Uh, not only was water baptism modeled by Jesus, it was commanded by him as well. So, it's not an option, it's a command. Did we agree with that back in Matthew chapter, uh, where was that? The first one I read. Matthew 28, we would say that it's a command. 
So it's an act that God requires of every believer. In fact, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, some of the last words that Jesus said before he ascended is this. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. That's a strong statement. I'll, I'll read it again. Why is there such significance on baptism? Listen, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. In fact, something very interesting happened in the Bible. Scripture shows us that water baptism frequently happened, and it was usually immediately after a person's conversion. And so we talked about it as a leadership. We're going to do some things a little different. They didn't delay. They didn't put a, 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 a 12 step program in place. They didn't have lessons, which we did. We gave classes here, but, but they didn't do that. If someone wanted to accept Christ that very day, they baptized them. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter replied to this, and this was on the day of Pentecost. There was 120 of them up in an upper room that received the Holy Spirit. By, the tongues of fire came down on them. Remember that story? And then they went out from there, and after they had the power of the Holy Spirit, 3,000 people came to Christ, came to know Christ that day. 3,000. And it says, repent. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ghost, And later in verse 41, it says, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the number that day. Another one that was very soon, it, it happened immediately, was in Acts chapter 22 in, in uh, Paul's conversion when he was on the road from Damascus. The light shined down on him and in that chapter, uh, immediately, he had this, he, he got, he had a conversion and he was required to be baptized. In Acts chapter 10, they have the same thing. In Acts chapter 16, 18, 19, converted and baptized. Urgency revolves around each one of those conversions in the Bible. And they all responded to Jesus in simple faith, but they, couldn't, they seemed like they needed baptism to complete their faith. Read it. It's in there. So do we all agree that Baptism is a direct command from God. Would we agree with that? Can we raise our hands? Right. It's a direct command from God. And I'm here to tell you, if there's anyone here this morning that's not saved and never been baptized, we're going to open it up to you guys this morning. You get a hold of me or Brennan after the service. We're not going to be baptized until, until 4 o'clock this afternoon. And we will make a way. What we've done this particular time is we've detached membership from baptism so that we could do this. It's not a, this does not mean that they're members of the church. That will come at a later date if they so choose to do that. But today is just baptism. It's about them putting a stake in the ground and saying, you know what, I want to aliyah, I want to be raised to life, and I want to live for Jesus. Water baptism is not a religious thing. It's not a Mennonite thing. It's not a Protestant thing. It's not a Catholic thing. It's a command of Jesus. Jesus was very public with his, and I think it's important. I think we ought to study a little bit, point out the significance of being public with our action this morning or this afternoon. When Peter called, or when Jesus called Peter to be a disciple, that was public. When he called Matthew, he called him at the city gate, that was public. Every follower that Jesus called in the New Testament called him in a public place. It was done publicly. If the band wants to make their way up, they can do that. So today, each one of you guys down here gets to profess publicly what Christ has done for you and what you want to do for him. You get to profess publicly that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. You get to profess publicly that your old life is past and new life is ahead of you. You get to profess publicly that you want to aliyah continually towards God. There's something powerful that's going to happen in your life this afternoon. Something very powerful. 
We're going to baptize each and every one of you in, by immersion. And that is basically, we're going to take you, bend you back. You're going to die to old self. All the things, that the nasty things, that the lies that you've said, the mean things you've said to other people, the things that you took without asking, all of those things get left at the bottom of the pond. And as we come up, it'll be Aliyah. Colossians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 12 says this that you're buried with him in baptism. And we're resurrecting to new life in Christ. I'd like to think that God is calling us up. It's a continual aliyah. It's a continual climb to the top. Up out of darkness, up out of depression, up out of anxiety, out of bad relationships, inappropriate relationships, up out of financial bondage, up out of sin, to a life of victory. That's what baptism means. Today, August the 20th, 2017, it's your date to start your upward journey. So God bless you guys. I'm super excited for this afternoon. It's gonna be an awesome time. You guys excited? You guys excited? Let's give these guys a hand.